Welcome, everybody. Um, my name is Michael Smith. I am the Superintendent of Congregational and Community Vitality for the Mountain Sky Conference. So thanks just for the opportunity to jump on the Zoom call, to talk with one another, to support one another. The thing I wanted to just begin with today is just, uh, just take a deep breath uh, with all the busyness that is going on. It's good to be just reminded to everybody take a deep breath and I'll mute myself so you don't hear me breathe. All right, ready? One, two, three, deep breath. Feel better? Maybe, hopefully a little bit. All right, so obviously we have been going through some uh, interesting times, different types of circumstances on what to do in our local congregations. I know probably most of us on this call might be clergy. Uh, I see some laity folks, which is awesome, but I think most of us are in Mountain Sky as well. So um, just welcome. So as we get started, um, in light of what's been kind of going on in your local churches the past you know, couple weeks, um, I'm curious as you are reflecting, what is one thing that you are really taking away or learning from what you've had to adjust in your ministry the past couple weeks. I'm gonna actually send us into breakout rooms. I want you to share together. What's that one thing you're kind of taking away of based upon having to do some things differently or, or not? Uh, what are some ways, or, what, or excuse me, what are some things that you're learning? So I'm gonna break us off into groups for uh, probably about seven minutes to talk with each other and um let's see okay this is probably good so let's take about seven minutes to share what's really that one takeaway the past couple weeks has taught you about what you've had to change or not change in ministry okay here we go to breakout rooms Okay. Am I frozen? Is that Aura? Hello? Here we go. All right, Melinda, are you there? Yep. Okay, good. And Trey, are you there? And is it Aura? Is that right? Trey's here. Yes, that's right. I prefer to just listen to groups rather than, than have to come up with some kind of uh, good information. So I marked later, but I'm here. Okay. All right, so uh, Melinda, can I invite you to share first? What's something that you're reflecting on? Um, the past week or two that you're learning about your ministry? In what context? Um, can you ask the question a little differently? What do you want to know? What, what have you had to do differently this past week for church and what has that taught you? Okay. Um, I have had to um, get some uh, tools in my toolkit in terms of cyberspace ministry. Um, I've had to have a million conversations, it seems like, in order to convey five minutes worth of information, whereas prior to the pandemic quarantine, I could have that five minute conversation, information sharing to everyone at once and be done with it. Um, I am learning that it is exhausting. It's like taking a class online versus uh, being in the classroom with 30 other people. It's a lot more work. Um, I have congregation members who are, who are 
solidly entrenched in the 1800s and do not want to leave it. Um, and so I have no effective way of reaching them. Um, and they have no effective way of reaching out to me or others. Um, I've seen God show up in um, amazing ways as people are scrambling and uh, reaching out to uh, show up for each other, connect with each other. Um, we, uh, it's forced um, some decisions that I have um, wanted the church to make, um, the churches I've been serving for four years now, to make for four years now. So that's been good. Um, but but they, they're very anxious, and it's hard to do ministry well when people are so anxious. And the tendency to overfunction is the pull on me to overfunction is is exhausting. Um, I, I would I would like to be um, doing something other than this meeting right now, but I also need this meeting right now, uh, or I think I do. I, it's just so much. Um, yeah, it's like being in in the middle of a tsunami trying to stay afloat and not just float keep other people from drowning it's very hard welcome pat and welcome eric um we're just doing and melinda hello um we're just doing a look and margaret hi uh we're just doing a little bit of check-in uh, the question that I've asked us to share about is what's what's the one thing um, this past week that you've learned or you're kind of adjusting to in your ministry? What are some, you know, do a little bit of reflection. What's that one thing that this past week has taught you? For me, um, it has shown how important live streaming and video um, should have been to our ministry. <laughs> uh, frankly, this is uh, something that we, we should have been doing all along. And, and the silver lining in the whole thing is uh, we, I think, have a chance to now really appreciate um, the, the capabilities that uh, we should be taking advantage of because we had, I mean, for the first time, who knows how often this this could could be happening? But you know, we had a hundred people uh, at least watch part of our Facebook live stream of our service, and we didn't even broadcast. I mean, we didn't even advertise it that much, um, and we had sixty, probably sixty, seventy people that were still here on Sunday. We had one last service because we had some baptisms, and we wanted to make sure those were done. Um, but we still had a hundred people uh, view, and uh, many of them we were able to see were folks that had, you know, maybe been a part of the church for uh, a while back, and and uh, we hadn't seen in a long time, and then here they are popping in on on uh, on our Facebook. So I I think uh, we have to I have to acknowledge. Um, now I've only been here six months, but still I have to acknowledge that that the church is, has has. Um, uh, missed out on ways to reach out and, uh, uh, to people that have kind of drifted. Um, so for me, that's it, that's the first thing, and it's kind of the humbling thing, um, is we should have been doing a lot more uh, before now. So there, I'll stop rambling. Well, thank you. Eric, can I invite you? Yeah, I'll echo that. I learned that I wish I knew how to do Facebook Live and streaming a long time ago. So we're going to have to figure it out this week, at least before Sunday. I've got a question. If I do a Facebook Live church service on Sunday, does it save so we can post it on our website or on YouTube or both? That's a great question. When we get out into the main room, if you want to put that in the chat box, I know that's going to be one thing that Jeremy Scott's going to try and help us with. Okay.
How about any anyone else? They want to share some of their things they're learning, reflecting on about having to do ministry just a little bit differently. I mean, I'm happy to offer something. I, I'm kind of the outsider here, but uh, I, uh, yeah, I mean, there is plenty um, that is different about this past week. One is that I've been firmly planted right here in front of my computer, pretty much on Zoom for seven days straight. Uh, and and uh, I'd say a few things. Um, I think that there's a lot that can get done by Zoom that I was you know, relying on other methods. Um, and so I'm starting to sort of trust this medium and it, uh, as more effective than I previously did. Um, and I would say that uh, a lot of the folks I am helping resource, um, cause I'm, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm working at a different conference. I'm in uh, greater New Jersey. Uh, and, uh, the folks I'm trying to resource are just exactly what you're talking about. They're just trying to create sort of spaces for relational connection, um, in ways that they didn't previously do. And so this is sort of a master's class on, um, you know, creative relational connection. And uh, anyway, I think it's been really, uh, I, well, I'll call it interesting. Like, it's a, it's a tragedy. I, I need to start by saying it's already a tragedy, but then also name the creative and interesting things that are starting to blossom out of this already. And I think it'll only increase. Well, we keep, I think our Zoom just keeps growing and growing because we keep adding more people into our breakout rooms. So welcome, new folks. Uh, we just have about a minute or two. We're sharing some initial learnings of what this past week has taught us. Uh, what's the one thing you're reflecting on or learning having to think about ministry in this new type of context? Anybody like to share that hasn't shared before? This is Scott Sheeswall up in uh, uh, the mountains. And uh, I, I guess one of my learnings has been how little communication, how little technology we have among our members. Um, probably half, half of the members are on flip phones, don't even have smartphones. Um, more than half the members aren't uh, um, on computer. Um, they're used to, to that face-to-face meeting at the grocery store or meeting someplace uh, and keeping in touch with each other. But um, I have people from Longmont, Lakewood, um, Denver, and, and all up and down the, the mountain corridor in, in my congregation. So it's, it's, uh, it's just something that <clears throat> they're, not, they're not used to doing. Our church doesn't have an office. It doesn't have internet. Um, we don't have the ability to record or stream anything yet. Um, that, that was actually a new ministry that we were hoping we could develop. Um, <clears throat> so it's, you know, we're, we're caught in that irony of being the oldest Protestant church in Colorado, still trying to get into the 19th or 20th or whatever century we happen to be in now. Thank you, Scott. Thank you. All right, I'm going to give us about 60 seconds to, before we head back into the um, large room. Any other final closing thoughts? Where are we at now? Okay. This is the 
different via phone. That looks like JJ. All right, welcome back everybody. I think as folks are coming back in, um, would any of you like to share with our larger group some of the things you've reflected on or learned about? Anyone, this is kind of open group time. What's the one thing you are reflecting on or learned about in this past uh, week or two? And again, just to remind you, if you can all mute yourself, that will help us in background. Thanks. Thanks. Can I ask, uh, Tanya, would you mind sharing about the AM radio thing that you did? And I think for rural communities, that's a real important asset. So what we, what I did was, is most communities, county seats have an emergency AM FM radio station. They don't usually do normal broadcasts. Uh, you can go through your county seat to get access to it, uh, and they're allowing us to do Sunday services and then other services throughout the week of uh, time to share, communicate, grounded space. Uh, we're doing um, story time. We're going to read storybooks for children to uh, tune in and listen to story time. Um, but uh, these are stations that usually broadcast local basketball and football games. So it just has to have county approval, uh, and then you can uh, work with the station. They usually have the equipment for us. They came and set it up in the church, so it's borrowed. So it didn't cost us anything. So that's what we're doing. Because we you. in the rural community here, we don't have enough bandwidth. As the teleperson came and said, tested, he says, you have less bandwidth than most third world countries. So we just don't have it. Um, I have three boosters on my home, so I can Zoom with you all, but we don't have this in any of our churches. So it's kind of going backwards to understand what we have here. Plus, most everybody here has a radio. Um, they don't have computers. They don't even have cell phones. Uh, and money don't have even DVD or CD players. So this was a way that we could connect with what they have. We do that as well. We have our every morning, uh, every Sunday morning, we're on KASL and Tanya and I were talking about that last night. Yeah. Because we don't, we don't have bandwidth. We don't, we don't have that stuff. Some people do, but not everyone. I, I'd appreciate it. Uh, it's PSTRBill at protonmail.com is the best way to email me. If you would send me your internet information, I will get that to John Tester and to Danes. They're working harder than any of the senators to improve our rural internet. Um, and I, and I, I, I found the, the ones that they've had from the conference office. Bill, you know, could you put your email in the chat room? Thank you. Yeah, that would be good, but I'm between two huge mountain areas between Butte and Bozeman, and it will really be hard for us to get bandwidth in this valley. Uh, but I would love to have better bandwidth. <laughs> Thank you. So one of the things that I've noticed is, you know, if you go on any social media or maybe your inbox is being flooded like mine is with different companies and different newsletters that I've probably signed up to at some point where now a lot of the resourcing coming out is, is, you know, we are inundated with ideas and opportunities on how to do certain things and you know the top seven ways to do this or and that's why i wanted to just gather us um to talk with one another and of course to bring in some resources to help us but also you know you folks are doing some things that you're figuring it out you know 83 percent of the churches in mountain sky um 
which would be 49 or less in worship attendance every week, may not want to engage in you know, some of the online capabilities, though we may want to see what it's like to offer it. So we're, we're living in that interesting time of trying to figure out how a lot of the resources on how to connect people in the digital world, our people may not be set up for it, and we're trying to scramble or figure out what to do. So I know that uh, yesterday or the day before, Jeff Rainwater and Laura Rainwater, the district superintendent and the congregational resource minister of the Wyoming district, sent out a letter to their uh, district that really um, I, I, is a great resource that talked about as you reflect upon the different ways to connect people, not just in worship, but in discipleship, in uh, stewardship, and all the different ways that we're looking as a church to you know, help people as disciples, they really kind of came up with an interesting way of looking at you know, high, medium, and or low uh, capability. So the high capability of digital resourcing is blank. Medium might be blank small might be blank. And did I see Laura? Are you, is Laura on this call? Yes, I am. I'm, yeah, Laura, I'm done making chili. Oh, good. Laura, can you speak to that real quick? Trying to use my brain. Um, so yeah, a lot of it was, was initiated by Jeff Rainwater and we kind of came up with ways is, and I'm trying to think if I could just see, if I could find that letter, but yeah, a lot of it is not everybody has the same capacity whether it's their building or their people, or even just, we know in the rural areas, they don't have the internet speeds that you often need. And so it was really just trying to think of um, a way to think, you know, Facebook Live is one way of doing that, or maybe you have somebody call and share what was shared in the sermon. Um, phone trees versus emails. Um, sorry, I can't find it that close. Uh, I have too many things open on my computer. But, I have it on just, my file, but so. just thinking through, um, what is it that you need? Um, not everybody has the tech to do live streaming, but maybe you could do um, just a recording and then you email it out to your people if you post it on YouTube or something like that. Um, I'm trying to think of the other things. Well, I, I appreciate that, Laura. Keep, keep thinking and jump on or put some stuff in the chat as you think about it. Um, you know, at the, at the end of the day, a lot of what we're facing, too, goes back to very basic things in pastoral ministry. So we've encouraged things like phone trees again, you know, getting the directory out, you know, off the shelf, dusting it off and just making phone calls and, you know, getting out a pen and a paper and writing just thinking of you notes, um, you know, just kind of taking it back to some of those basic things of connecting people that, you know, instead of figuring out a whole new online streaming service that maybe the first step is to just reach out to your people in the way that they can receive it best. But I, I do know that Jeremy Scott, right, is on this call. And Jeremy, the question I would have for you to share with us is what would be just a good user-friendly way for people to begin to help connecting with people in this digital world? Jeremy is a super tech person. He's a really super nerd in lots of many ways. So uh, Jeremy, I know all of you know probably Jeremy, but Jeremy, just talk to us a little bit about how can we get started or what are some tools that maybe we can look at if we're wanting to figure out how to engage people? Sure, absolutely. So um, I, I am very aware and conscious of the digital divide that exists in our conference. Um, and so that, 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 that is, a, is a challenge uh, for, for many of us. Um, in, in places where you um, do have um, access to at least some amount of, of, of reasonable uh, internet service, um, getting, getting started um, with like doing things like live streaming um, is, is certainly uh, possible for a pretty uh, low level of um, investment. And in fact, I have had a number of people uh, People I know call and talk to me. They've they've had they're starting to live stream or whatever. Um, you know, my my advice when churches want to do that is you eat one or two things. Either keep it really simple, um, and and that's usually based on something like using your smartphone um, or something as as your you know kind of all in one camera recording studio broadcast station and and all the rest of it. Um, or 
um, you know, just prepare to make a, a pretty decent investment and, and do it right. There's, there's some middle ground options, but, but truthfully, most people uh, outgrow those too fast. Um, the basic thing on that is, um, you know, the, your smartphone will do fine for you uh, on video quality uh, for, for most of what we are doing. Uh, it, where it will let you down is in audio. It, they're, just not, they're just not designed. They don't have those kind of, of microphones on them. So uh, the, the, if you're gonna, the best thing to do is um, to, um, if you're gonna purchase anything, uh, purchase a, a, an additional uh, directional uh, microphone that attaches to your smartphone and a, a, a tripod for like 20 bucks. Um, and then, you know, make sure you keep it as close to you as possible. So I have one on my desk I use for everything, um, all kinds of stuff. It's a little directional mic. It plugs into the lightning port on the bottom of your phone and, and away you go. Uh, you know, the nice thing is, you know, for where we're at today, uh, however, you know, you can do this um, ahead of time. Uh, and, uh, you know, you can, if you don't have decent internet um, at your church, um, you know, you can, you can do it all ahead of time if you need to record it um, and then upload it later. Um, and uh, that, that actually gives you some, some really um, helpful options. Both Facebook and um, YouTube now have a, a place where you can actually set something when you, when a video, when you upload it to not only be, um, not only not, not to basically not to go live right away, um, but you can actually even set it um, either as a scheduled post that will just post automatically somewhere down the road, um, or you can um, actually set it as a premiere, um, which, which is a nice feature if you're going to pre-record something. Uh, you can, and that basically lets people know that it's coming, but they won't ever actually be able to watch it until, you know, whatever. So if you need to record something at your church, maybe even the day before, uh, at, uh, if, and, and then, you know, in the meantime, get somewhere where you can get some bandwidth to, to upload it. You can then upload it to Facebook, upload it to YouTube, set it as a premiere for your normal worship time, uh, anyway. Uh, and then, and then folks can, can access it that way, uh, which is, which is kind of the quick and easy, uh, way to do things. I think the big thing is it, when we're thinking about lives, like, especially we'll talk about some other things, but if we're going to talk about, especially things like worship and all that, Recognize there's just a lot of stuff that isn't going to translate. Um, congregational singing isn't going to translate, so don't bother. Um, you know, there's just a lot of that stuff that just isn't going to work. Um, so, you know, keep it simple. People's attention spans when they're live and in person is longer than when they're watching things online. So if your normal worship service is an hour and your stream version is 35 minutes, that's not a bad thing. Um, you know, that, that, that works. Um, so I, I would say, given that, I mean, given that we all hope that this is, you know, a somewhat, we don't, it's temporary, we're not sure how long. Um, really just, just focus on what you can do and what you have access to. And, and my guess is, you know, we, we all have access to, so, you know, somebody has access to a smartphone in your church. And like I said, even if you don't have internet in your church, fine, then don't stream it, don't live stream it, that's fine. Do it the day before, record it the day before, um, on Saturday and then just, you know, drive somewhere, get yourself somewhere where you can upload it. I mean, the nice thing is nobody's in the Starbucks and the McDonald's and anybody else and nobody's using their Wi-Fi, so you can sit in their parking lot and upload to your heart's content and, and no one will bother you. Um, and I know that that's, that's a different reality for some of our folks too. Um, so I, I think that's, um, you know, and, and then you can kind of build from there um, as far as, as what you want to add. Um, but again, I would say if you're going to do anything, uh, get a better microphone on your camera or on your phone uh, to, to, to do that. Can I, uh, Jeremy, uh, jumping on what you're saying, I, I, we live streamed this weekend for the first time, bought yeah. this at Walmart, $39. Guess what it's got? It's got a microphone. I don't know if anybody's seen that, but yeah, you know, and it works. The qu yeah. sound quality is really good on mm -hmm. this. For the yeah, smart camera, so yeah. thirty nine dollars in Walmart. Yeah, don't buy name brand stuff. It's fine. Um, I've also heard that actually a lot of the streaming equipment's getting hard to find. A lot of places are sold out yeah. because every church on the planet is doing what we're doing. <laughs> um, so, so that's that's it. Um, question of the thing was online giving. Yeah. Um, so, and most churches have resisted it for years. We have a nice excuse right now. Um, there's a great quote that served me uh, many times in life, which is never waste a good crisis. Um, and there is one. 
uh, going on. Um, so I, I am a, just a big, big fan, especially of smaller churches, of the all-in-one solution. And by far, the best all-in-one solution for churches is Breeze. And Breeze will give you, um, it's cloud-based, you can use it anywhere. It has your online giving, it has your text to giving, it has all of that stuff. And it's a full church management system, so you can track people, you can send emails, you can slice and dice and julienne. Um, it's really, really handy. One of the things that, that we were really blessed that we had invested in that because, I mean, it was, once you're up and running, it was three button presses for us to basically produce a list of people who have worshiped with us since the first of the year. Um, so that we, we use those as our first primary contact people to say when we knew things were going to be different and we weren't going to meet in person. Um, and, and similarly, we we made a list of everybody who's contributed to the church since the first of the year, because that's the group we're going to start talking to next about making sure they continue to give and, and, and support us. Um, so, you know, I mean, it, it, free, uh, frankly, you will pay less than Bre for Breeze than you will for Pushpay or Vanco or any of the just giving solutions. So, I mean, I just, I can't say enough about it. Um, and it lets you, um, again, it gives you a nice communication tool um, and all the rest of it. Um, so, we're using all those tools, really, we're trying to use all those tools to organize ourselves. Um, I would also say the other thing is, we're trying really hard here, and I think we all need to, is also to stick to our strengths um, and, and do what we know how to do well. Um, you know, and so we, we have a fairly, we, we do okay with children's ministry around here. That's one of the things we're doing. Uh, so, you know, in that sense of using volunteers and asking people to do stuff, um, one of the things that we're doing is we're asking, we're having our, um, we made up a list of uh, our folks who are probably the most vulnerable to what's going on, are the most locked in their homes, are probably the most disconnected because we know we, they don't have internet, they don't have, um, you know, uh, access to do the live stream and everything. So we, we took that list of folks um, and then we're actually creating kits for Sunday school with a Sunday school lesson and instructions in it. We have a teacher who's not teaching right now and was kind of bored and really wanted to do that. Um, and then included in the kit is an envelope with um, address to one of those people who we know is the most at risk. Um, and so well, part of the Sunday school lesson is to make a note and a card and, and all of that um, or something like that, draw a note, draw a picture, whatever. Um, but just let them know they're being cared for. Um, stick it in the envelope, put a stamp on it because the postal service, postal service is still working. Um, you know, so sometime middle next week, you know, all these things will arrive. So, you know, we're, we're trying to use, you know, make sure that we keep what of that personal touch we can um, and, 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 and leverage all these things um, together. Um, sorry, I haven't been keeping up with um, the thing. Uh, are, there, are there questions about any of that real quick? I didn't, I didn't, I, didn't have a, I, was, I, I must confess, we've been like everyone running around like chickens with their head cut off. So I didn't really get a chance to organize my thoughts too much uh, for this call after Michael asked me to do it yesterday. Um, so you're kind of getting a little stream of consciousness and I apologize. One, one of the things we did since the postal service is still working is we seem to always have extra bulletins. Mm. And rather than just recycle those, we, we had the congregation the last Sunday we met, um, people in the congregation signed them we're missing you um hope to be in touch with you <clears throat> because it included a prayer it included you know the service that they didn't attend and uh, we sent those out by mail to to a, about 30 people in the congregation and i i got a lot of responses from people who really appreciated that because it was personal um it it came in an envelope but it also help them be a part of the of the service that they missed. That's great. I like that. All right. All right. Thanks, and so, Jeremy. And keep sorry, keep keep putting the uh questions that you have in the chat box. I know that Charmaine, I saw her on this call. Um she's great. She's our communications person and uh we'll try and track some of these questions and Charmaine is doing a really fantastic job at uh, putting some resources online and uh, really trying to connect us all with uh, what's happening, not only in our conference, but throughout our, uh, our larger network. Um, and Jeremy, can you put your contact information in the chat box if people want to follow up with you, if you're willing to uh, you know, answer some questions that, um, that we may not have the time for on this call to do today? 
put yeah. your um, info in the chat box for us and we'll try and help make sure people get that. Um, but so, I wanted to, go ahead, Jeremy. I, I, did, just, I wanted to throw a couple more things, just one more, uh, that, that did occur to me. Um, I will say if, if you are, if you are a church and, um, you know, uh, and you're able, and you do have some ability to, to, to do some of this, I, I would look beyond just worship too. Um, so, I mean, I, we have more advanced recording facilities here, which is nice. But yesterday, actually, I just sat down, like, in my office with my phone. Uh, stories, uh, children's stories. Because one of the things I do on a regular basis um, is go to our preschool and read stories to them. And obviously, I can't do that now. So I recorded myself reading a couple of kids' stories. And we're going to, you know, we'll, we'll post those, um, email them out to all of our preschool families, but also our church families. Um, we are asking, you know, and, and we having other people do similar things. Um, uh, and uh, so, so it's also not just, I think we want to, the nice thing is worship gives us the excuse to figure out how to do things like record and post and live stream and all that, but it's not exclusive to there. And once you have that ability, you can use it in other places. So we're going to trial a couple of things next week, including some, um, you know, some live moments with, you know, just some of our, our some of our more musically gifted people here um, just sharing the gift of music. We're asking, actually, we're going to ask people to send us in song and hymn requests. And our we have a great organist and pianist here. Um, she's going to play, and we get somebody to sing, and we're going to do 30 minutes live stream of of people's you know requested you know songs and stuff because they're not hearing them on the stream on Sunday morning because they're not singing. Um, but that's that's a comfort, and especially for our older group, you know, those, especially those familiar hymns that they know and love. You know, they're not able to hear those, so there's a comfort. We probably will record those at the same time, just you know, audioly on the same phone, um, or you know, on an audio thing, and then we'll make a CD of it. And we'll and because we the one thing that uh, most of our, even our most restricted folks have access to is a CD player. They don't have DVD. We learned and a bunch of other stuff. They do have a CD player. Um, so we're going to record it live, leave it live, let it feel live, um, and and send those CDs out to them as well, um, so they can get that. So. Um, the worship, the, the crisis around worship and the fact that we just feel like we need to do it gives us an excuse to learn some new skills. We can apply those skills other places um, and anything that we, we already know that we do well. So I'd invite us, you know, think, think creatively beyond just the Sunday morning too uh, and how to keep people engaged. Thanks, Michael. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Jeremy. That's really great. Yeah, Michael, um, Keith yes. Uterberg here. I had a question for Jeremy or for you. Uh, with regard to the music, uh, what do you do with the copyright uh, situation? Uh, a lot of the songs are copyrighted, and yeah. uh, how, how do you get around that? Well, you you buy a license, so if you, I mean, um, if, I, well, there's there's so C, CCL, CCLI um, has a streaming license, and so if you're streaming at all, you really should um, buy that additional license from them, and that covers pretty much anything you would do. Okay. Um, so it's just, it's an add-on to your normal CCLI, CCLI license, which everybody should have anyway, um, but yeah. they, have a, they have a streaming add-on. Okay, um, we, yeah, we do have the CCLI, but we don't have the streaming add-on. Yeah, and it's per church side. The nice thing is they still do it by worship attendance of your actual building. Um, okay. So, you know, it's fairly inexpensive for the smaller churches. But yeah, you just go and buy that, um, or you can get one from one license as well. Um, somebody made theirs free, right? Didn't somebody? I saw something on Facebook about that. I, I just shared the link about one license. I'm going to reshare the link again. They're offering it for free through April 15th. Yeah, good. Yeah, we, we already subscribed and we're looking at that. So, yeah, you can get one license. Again, we'll cover most everything as long okay. as you've got one. Okay. So, yep. Okay. Yeah, one of the things that we face is uh, I'm part time and I'm 50 miles away from the church. Uh, so, you know, to travel to the church to do a service that didn't work. Uh, but, and we do have internet at the church, but, you know, not all our people have that. Yeah. So, um, I, I would do it from my home, which that's one of the things we're working on right now. Absolutely. That's great. Well, let me, uh, toss it over to Trey Wentz, who is, um, a consultant with ministry architects and ministry incubators. And Trey's been on our call, kind of listening to, uh, some of our unique contexts. And the question that I have for you, Trey, specifically, is, um, you know, we're having to, you know, learn some new things, look at things differently. Trey, I don't know if you are aware of this, but Easter is in 25 days. I've heard, I've heard about that. So um, 
how would you help us think through what do we do as we either approach Easter or just as we begin to try and figure out some things about how to do ministry into the future in light of what's going on now? Mm. Um, sure, let's talk about it. And thanks for letting me tag along. And thanks to everyone for letting me eavesdrop. I'm not sure that you had a say in the matter, but thanks nonetheless. Um, it's really good because you get to do Easter two hours before we do. That's true. So I'll tell you how, I'll let you know how it goes. So a little more notice in two hours, but that's great. Okay. Okay. Um, I'll, let me say this. Uh, well, actually, let me start with my favorite Easter Sunday idea um, that I've heard so far. You know, everybody is sort of turning over ideas and let me just share with you all. And then you can scramble to see who gets to your local site first. Uh, my favorite is uh, I've heard of a church or two that is renting out a drive-in movie theater because that allows you to practice social distancing in your car and also have some sort of experience. So I don't know how many of you that that would be possible for, but I love that idea and I would definitely go. Um, so do whatever you will with that. I, that's, that's not gonna solve very many problems, uh, but it'll solve maybe two. Um, yeah, here's, here's uh, and I think Jeremy, you, you mentioned a lot of really helpful stuff because you're dead on uh, in terms of wasting a crisis, you know, people change their habits in two situations because they want to, or because they have to, that's really it. Uh, and right now is sort of, right now is kind of a have to situation. And, and um, for all of the tragedy that is, you know, a crippling uh, pandemic uh, that we're facing, and that's real. It also is this strange moment where people can potentially act differently, behave differently. And I just think it would be a mistake if we didn't recognize that in our churches. Um, and I just, so part of this is just reiterating some of what Jeremy had mentioned. Um, for people who just kind of poo-pooed the idea of online giving or doing anything digital, now for some of us, it is flat not possible. And some of you named that. But for a whole lot of us, it is possible. It's just something people didn't want to do. And I think we need to recognize this as a moment where folks who were previous, previously unlikely might get on board if we did the heavy lifting for them. If we laid out, listen, um, I know you want to stay connected with your church financially. Here's how you do it. You got to click on two buttons. And we kind of did the work. Um, listen, I know you want to stay connected spiritually. So um, we're going to do this Facebook uh, live uh, um, devotion every Tuesday morning or every morning for that matter. All those things are possibilities right now in a way that they weren't previously. Um, I say that leading up to Easter, Michael, because I think, um, you know, we're gonna look it up, we're gonna look up in eight weeks. Well, Easter's gonna be before then. Um, but we're gonna look up whenever we're allowed to be uh, you know, together again, physically. Uh, and it can be business as usual, or we can behave in a new way. And I just think it is worth our while to consider um, what new practices um, we want people to engage in during an odd time when in a weird way we get a free pass for trying things. Um, we, we just get to try some stuff and some of it will be a huge failure and some of it will be a raging success, but we get a free pass right now because this is a completely unprecedented thing for, for us, at least in our lifetime. Um, I'll give you one story because I think it represents that. Um, a, a pastor I'm coaching in New Jersey, uh, who's just hands down an excellent thinker, an excellent leader. Um, she recognized this and uh, also recognized that not everybody in her congregation is going to engage digitally. And so the plan she set up and she called it, uh, she called it a connection, connection point. And she identified about a third of her congregation. She has a larger congregation. Um, she identified uh, a third as, as a part of this first round and she recruited 40 volunteers. Um, and these volunteers are sort of emotionally intelligent. They're good conversationally. They're sensitive to people, things like that. Um, and she created, and all folks, all it is is a, a really robust phone chain. Like it's all it is but uh, she has broken it down. Each volunteer will call up to 10 people a week. She's given them a list um, that they will check in when, with, and people can obviously opt out. And the language she's using is mind, body, spirit. And here's where I think it applies to us. Um, 
uh, she'll, the, the callers will be explicit. Hey, we ask about mind, body, spirit. This is sort of what the church is checking in on. So here's your mind question this week. What has been your biggest stressor um, thing that's just dominated your mind? What have you been thinking about a lot? And they'll listen. Uh, what, uh, uh, physically, what are you doing for exercise in a time when maybe you can't go to the gym? They actually have a different script for, um, for uh, the older population in their church. And so this week's question for body is, how are you getting groceries and do you need any help? That's their body question. And then spirit, uh, you know, they're being good Wesleyan folks and saying something like, how goes it with your soul? Um, and a lot of times, especially for their younger population, they say, really what we mean is, no, seriously, how are you? Um, I say all that to say that they will do this for several weeks and they will use the language of mind and body and spirit over the phone with hundreds of people in their congregation. And then they're gonna see each other physically, be it on Easter Sunday or the first Sunday we're allowed to gather in person. And what they will have done is cultivate an actual way of talking to each other. Mind, body, spirit will be a, become weirdly normal for them. And I think we can be honest when we say like, typically when you see somebody on the street to ask questions about their mind, body and spirit is not a socially normal thing to do. It's socially weird for the most part. Um, but they will have cultivated this conversation for, you know, somewhere between four and eight weeks and mind, body, soul will be normal for them. And so when they get together on Easter or whenever they're allowed, um, they will be, uh, they will continue to use that language because they will have built a new culture during an otherwise really difficult time. Um, so part of what I want to lift up is, uh, you know, we're going to behave differently after this is over, or at least we have the opportunity to. So I encourage everybody to just take half an hour and go, how do I want to behave? Like, is it going to be business as usual or am I going to use this as an opportunity to behave differently? Um, Michael, in terms of how Easter morning can look, uh, besides going to a drive-in or besides behaving a little bit differently because we've cultivated some habits in the meantime, um, everything is going to do with either how we've cultivated the digital habit or, um, or how, how we've cultivated a cultural habit. Um, in terms of creative expressions, uh, you know, I think this room or this chat room, we'll say, is gonna have a lot more creative you know, ideas than I do, besides the drive-in movie theater, which I think we can all agree is brilliant. Thanks, Jay. Sure. Um, yeah, and I, I bring up Easter just as a, a way of, that's probably in a lot of our minds, the biggest next event that we're probably now set, starting to settle into that this is going to be a while. And I think what we're really seeing now is that we may not be able to do Easter 25 days from now on the, on the you know, we may have to create an Easter or resurrection experience in May or June um, yeah. or July, depending on how this thing kind of shapes out. I was just thinking about, you know, what is that next event, that next big thing? And you know, for most of us, it's probably that Easter experience or, you know, maybe in some of our contexts is based whether it's upon harvest or planting, probably not harvest, but, you know, planting season or some other uh, areas. Um, you know, what are the things that we need to do now to start thinking about, you know, I loved your idea about taking 30 minutes. What, what would it look like if we all took 30 minutes and asked ourselves the question, how do I, how do I want to behave? Um, I, I really appreciated that, that question that you sent uh, or that challenge for us. And Michael, if I can add there, um, and, and I think this is a good habit always, especially right now. Um, if we're not careful, we'll skip this opportunity. This is a moment for deep empathy or deep listening uh, that can really affect, like we think we're gonna come up with that whatever idea we're gonna come up with and it's probably gonna be the same. No, if we do some deep listening with our community, I guarantee it'll affect whatever ideas we come up with. And, and by that, what I mean is, uh, you know, whatever method you need to use to talk to some people and hear where their points of pain are in this particular moment, because um, communities will be different. Some communities, uh, by far, their number one stressor is gonna be financial. Um, in other communities, their biggest stressor is going to be grief. I live near New York, and in the next 10 days, 
grief care is going to be a really serious uh, ministry that my people need to get good at. Um, and then for a whole lot of others across the United States, it's going to be about relational connection. But whatever it is you hear, the question to ask after you've listened well is, how am I and my church uniquely positioned to meet one of those needs? We're not going to fix them all. But to ask the question, how am I and my congregation uniquely positioned to meet one of those needs? And I think we will have faithfully sort of led during this time if we, if we spend some time with that question. Thank you. I would encourage us too as well to, to lean into uh, the, the deep parts of our congregations, really taking that time to reflect on what is it that my people need? Because we can see a lot of emails, a lot of online resources coming at us, and we can do the work of tracking those things down. But I think if we miss that step of thinking, who are my people and what do they really need and what's going to connect best with them? You know, I think that's the deep work that I'm going to encourage all of us to think about because each, each one of us has a unique context. So again, I would encourage you to lean into your context, into your people. If you're rural, think rural, which you know how to do. You know, think about who you are, who your people are. Just for the next seven minutes, because uh, I want to honor your time, what are your questions that you'd have for Jeremy or for Trey? Um, and we're going to try and get to all of them. Uh, so if you want to throw some in the chat box as well, we can address them later. But for the sake of our time now, what do you got for Jeremy or for Trey? What are some questions that are on your mind? Go ahead and fire away. So Jeremy, I had a question for you about Breeze. We just started in Breeze and we really like it. And, um, but there has been resistance before on the online giving. Is that very simple and easy to do? Is it as easy as like Square or? Can oh, you um, I, yes. I mean, honestly, it's the, it's the simplest tool out there. Um, okay. So, cause you have an option. Well, I mean, you have kind of the basic options. You can either have people um, do it um, go to a website and do it. You can set, it'll give you a, a link that, okay. that is your giving page. Um, or the other thing is you can do it through text and you, you basically, when you sign up, you can ask for a phone number and it could be a local phone number. Um, and all, all anybody has to do is set that text, that phone number. If they've never done it before, they're going to get a link back to put their payment information in. They only have to do that once. Um, and then in the future, you just send it in there. So, um, there are, they have great videos on their website to just walk you through how to set it all up. Okay. Uh, you know, and the nice thing is if you don't use it, there's no fee. If you're already paying the 50 bucks, you're paying the 50 bucks. Right. Um, and if you don't use it, they're not going to charge you anything. They only charge you, you know, the two and a half percent or whatever everybody charges you. Right. So um, we did work on our folks though, because things like automatic check withdrawals are a little cheaper. They're like 1% instead of two and a half percent. So we do encourage right. people to do those. Yeah. I mean, it's like everything square. Everybody okay. takes, takes a two, two and a half, something like that. So. Okay. Uh, but it's really straightforward. Our folks took to it fast. Our, yeah. Okay. And Trey, I appreciated that you, uh, <laughs> driving the movie would be a blast, but not really feasible for us. And, um, but we did talk about what if we can't come in the building, uh, do we have set, not just sunrise service, but a service where everyone can spread out, if possible, something, you know, and I guess it'll just depend on what the regulate or restrictions are at that time. Jenna, do you have space in Montana? Does Montana have areas of space? I just, I don't know. A little bit. A little bit. Let me look out the window. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Any other questions? I just want to say thank you too. This is Kama. Um, and uh, just for us thinking, some churches are talking about postponing an Easter celebration. For others, of, uh, for others we will do something on Easter as, as per our tradition. That, but knowing that every Sunday is a little Easter and our, you know, that that doesn't preclude a celebration whenever such time we enter the building. So there may be varieties of ways to express depending on your congregations feel about the rhythm of the year and the traditions that, that there's no right or wrong as we move forward in that way either.
Thank you. Any other questions? I'm looking up low power FM transmitters so we can just set up our own um, drive in movie theater at the church. Because you, you, people get them for like, you know, when you drive up to somebody's Christmas light display and they've got, you know, the music, you turn it into whatever. So it's just like, I bet you can buy those. Turns out you can. I think Olin Lindemood is doing yeah. something like that in his park, in the church parking lot. Yeah, they I've just had that on Facebook on Sunrise, is it? Or yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I've heard of it before and I've just, I've just like realized like, 150 bucks. We had a guy that owns a Tesla that put on a whole Christmas, um, presentation out in our parking lot you can program your tesla to do it so maybe everybody can come and just watch the tesla um you know be the easter experience that while you sit in your parking lot just to throw that out there i would be interested jeremy if you're looking that up that's something for those of us that may have parking lots but don't have that techie language for that i'm very curious about that that'd be an interesting targeted outreach for maybe many of us with parking lots or space. And uh, Charmaine, uh, can you just uh, hop on the call or and give us, you, you mentioned something about the chat box will be available and can you give us a brief word on just some of the online resources that you're putting up for people? Yes, so um, this session is being recorded um, and we're going to edit, you know, for the useful uh, footage that people need to know. And um, I'm saving the chat and we're going to put it as a kind of a usable document, as well as any other of the resources that Jeremy's mentioned that I've been putting. Um, and so we'll be including that as a recap email out to the conference. And I'll work with you, Michael, on that recap. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Uh, just want to honor everybody's time. It is about that time. Uh, if you're wanting to do more conversations like this, um, feel free to reach out to me. I'm happy to jump on a Zoom call with anybody or phone call and, and create a space for us to talk, to mutually resource each other, to brainstorm together. I, I, big thanks to Jeremy and to Trey just for coming in and talking with us uh, and helping us think differently about some things. So uh, I know we didn't get, obviously we could take hours and hours to talk through these things, but I just really thank you for the time to jump on this call. And just to remind you that, you know, we're here for you. So if you need anything, please reach out. Uh, we want to support you during this time. We want to do anything that we can to speak to your mind, to, to your body, to your spirit. Uh, my favorite thing is going for buffalo wings. We, we can't do that now, but that is a mind, body, spirit thing that is just, we have to wait to do that. But I will, I will bless you with chicken wings soon, friends. Um, no, but seriously, I just want to have a word of prayer for us and encourage you. Uh, I'm going to share my um, email address now. Uh, it's pretty easy if you wanted to reach out. So it's just vitality at mtnskyumc.org. But let me have a prayer for us and, uh, and hope that you'll be blessed by this, this time that we had today and look for some follow-up resources. Gracious God, thank you just for the time to be able to share. We know that there is so much going on and um, we just don't know necessarily how to respond to all of the things happening and just into this new reality, but we know that you are good. We know that there is mercy for us today. So we live in your grace. We live in your love. We're thankful for this connection that we're a part of, this community that as we share with one another, as we support one another, we can continue to live, to follow you, and to make disciples for the transformation of your world. We ask your blessing upon that will be in front of us today for all the different things that the folks represented on this call will be about. Bless their communities, their churches, their families with your grace and peace today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, everybody.